in Jesus I am statements, his ego and me. And no, that's not like the ego commercials that you see. This is God saying that I am. That there is nothing beyond who he is. And Jesus is claiming that same for himself. And this morning he says that he is the living water. Let's listen to a few verses. They're not on your screen. Because what I want you to do is I want you to listen. And I want you to take in the sights, the smells, the taste of the scripture. I want you to think about it. What is it that you hear? What is it that you're seeing? What is it that you're tasting? What is it that you're smelling? Who else is coming along? So listen to these words as I read them. Maybe even take a few notes because I'm going to give you some time at the end to share those. Now when Jesus knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus, or when John, let me start again. Now when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize but only his disciples, he left Judea, he departed again to Galilee. But at the time he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and so Jesus, wearied as he went on his journey, sat down beside the well. It was about the sixth hour, or noon. And there came a woman of Samaria to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you... A Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria. For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, if you knew the gift of God, and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you don't even have anything to draw it with, and the well is very deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself and his sons and his cattle? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go to your husband and, come to, and call him. The woman answered him, But I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you're right in saying you have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and he who you now have is not your husband, so this you said truly. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our father worshipped on this mountain, and you say in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me. The hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, he who is called the Christ, and when he comes, he will show us all things. And Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. 
Just then his disciples came and they marveled that he was talking with a woman. But none said, what do you wish? Or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jug and she ran into the city and she said to all the people, come, see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? So they went out of the city and they were coming to him. And I'll end it there. There's two stories in here that I want to talk about this morning. One is about a priest, a Pharisee. Ooh, you know, I think in our minds we picture Pharisees wearing these long black robes, and appropriately because we picture them as the bad guys, right? But this one comes to Jesus and says, Rabbi, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus says to him, you must be born again. You know who I'm talking about? Nicodemus, right? Next story. Jesus comes to Sychar and there's a Samaritan woman and Samaritans are not or should not have any dealings with the Jews according to religious law. Remember, they were that crossbreed. They were part of those who married Jews because they failed to throw them out of the land like they were commanded. And so the Samaritans always considered themselves part of the chosen people. But the Jews never did. And in that, he encounters a woman who is drawing water at noon. Now, I want you to think back a few weeks ago when it was a hundred and some degrees at noon. Okay, that's the environment that's going on. Woman is out there drawing water. Now, she didn't have a tap that she could turn at her house. She had to go and get water every day and probably several times during the day. And they did that so that her family would have water for all of its needs had a nice, pure, clean well. And you notice, there's nobody else at this well. There's a reason. It's 12 o'clock noon. It's 100 degrees in the shade. Nobody draws water. So why is she? He told you. She'd had five husbands, and the guy she's living with now isn't even her husband. Back in that day, big scandal. Big controversy. So in order to avoid, a commentary says, all the wagging tongues, surely not, right? All the women of the city come together and the one who is living with someone who is not her husband, who has been married five times, surely they're not rumoring and gossiping about her, are they? But in order to avoid that, she came at noon. And that's where you hear this encounter with Jesus. Now on the surface, it sounds a lot like water. Maybe I should have had Lauren preach this. Our water attorney. <laughs> but if you look a little bit deeper, it really isn't a lot about water. It's about something else. It says, the gift of God. And it's not just water. The gift of God is something I'm going to ask you to consider what that is. Because in a few moments, I'm going to ask you to talk with one another about what you think the gift of God is all about. But water is an important metaphor in all of this. You see, you need water. You need clean water. You need pure water in order to sustain life. And we know that much of the world does not have that. And Jesus is talking to her about a life's necessity, water. But there's another life's necessity that he wants to talk to her about, and that's God's love. As I was putting all of this together, I came across a news story and did some research and started digging and found a video that gives a little clip about a young girl by the name of Rachel. 
Rachel's nine years old. Rachel's got a dream. 